Israel is real and back with part three of who is Jesus Christ. All right, we left off on, um, is that Philippians chapter two and verse eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So like I was saying, the most high put on the flesh and he became man. All right. Like I said, a lot of Hebrews can't understand. A lot of people can't understand who Christ truly was. All right, that's why we're going to find out Israel. All right, let's go to Revelations chapter 3 and 14. Revelations chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So the beginning of the creation of God, because Christ made all things. All right. He is the word of God who is God. All right. Let's go over to uh, Matthew 28 and verse 19. Matthew 28. And we want verse 19. <clears throat> reads that's why Christ said this here go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost because we know Israel why did Christ say this All right, why did he say that I right, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost Let's go to 1 John. 1 John. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, he says. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. And we want verse 7. Because he said this. The reason why he said that is because of this. And it reads, For there, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. All right. So you see why he said go baptize. He told Peter and them teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because the Son is the Word. Okay. Christ is the Word of God who is God. And we just read. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word. Who is the Word? Christ is the Word. All right. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. See, because a lot of people don't know the mystery of the Godhead, Israel. Okay, the mystery of the Godhead. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one, not separate. You need the Word to have the Father. Christ is the Word, Israel. So you need the Word um, in order to have the Father. They isn't, they're not separate. They're one, Israel. So if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. You don't have the Father, you don't have the Son. Okay, you need the word. You need the word, Israel, because the word is God. And he's, the word is the wisdom. Okay, and the Most High spoke everything into existence, man. That was Christ. Christ is the word. The Most High put. All right, the Most High put his word in the fleshly body, Israel. Okay. That's why he said that would prepare the body for me because um, God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and could um, enforce and condemn sin in the flesh because the word was made flesh and dwelt among the Israelites. You see what I'm saying? God walked with the Israelites. He talked with the Israelites. Therefore, he came as an Israelite. The Most High came as an Israelite. He was from the tribe of Judah, the seed of David. You see what I'm saying? So the Most High... Is his word, man. His word, the most high is the word. The father put that flesh on. Alright. So they are one. They're not separate. So you need the word in order to have the father, Israel. So therefore, you're not worshiping two gods. You're worshiping one God. The same God from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus Christ. The word, Israel. 
Let's go to John 10 and 25. You got to understand this. God was manifested in the flesh, Israel. We understand the Father is a spirit. But when the Father um, put on that flesh, he put on the flesh. He came as his word, which is him. John 10 and 25. And it reads, Jesus answered him, I told you and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, because the Father is a witness unto his Son. The Father is a witness unto his Son, Israel, which is his Word. He's a witness, right? right? He's a witness to his Word. That's why when, when Christ came and the Spirit of the, the, the Lord was ascending up on him like a dove, he said, um, this is my what, beloved son in whom I well please. He's bearing record of his word, Israel. He's bearing record of his word. Right? He's bearing record of his word. Right? Let's go to John 1 and 34. John 1 and 34. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. You see that? So even John bear witness. Like the Lord said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be established. You see what I'm saying? So the Father is a witness of his word, man. And Son Jesus Christ, John is a witness. All right, the apostles, all of them is witnesses, Israel. So John said, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts 26. You got to understand this, Israel. If you don't believe Christ, who he is, you don't have eternal life in you. It's like the Pharisee Jews, they didn't want to believe who he was. You know? He kept telling them. Acts 26, verse 22 to 23. And it reads, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should, should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Right? Let's go to John chapter 1. Let's go back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, and we went 6 to 8. And it read, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. Remember, he said, I, I bear witness this is the Son of God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Right? Because he was Elijah in the spirit, man. The spirit of Elijah was upon him. He was Elijah to come Israel. John. All right, paving the way of the Lord. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Christ is that light that all men through whom might believe. He was not that light. John wasn't that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Right? John came to bear witness of that light. You see what I'm saying? Witness Israel. Let's go to Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3 and we want 1 to 6 and those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight right because John had the spirit of Elijah on him all right he was he was on um, Elijah to come Verse four, in the same John had his remnant of camel's hair and leathered and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Right. John was baptizing the Israelites, the, uh, Jew, the Jews in the river Jordan. Until the, until the light come, the Lamb of God, which is Christ. 
And that's why he said he shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. Right? John was baptized with water until Christ came. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert of a highway for our God. For our God, he was preparing the way of the Lord. Christ is the most high. The most high was coming. He was showing us Israel. The Lord was coming, Israel. All right, prepare in the desert a highway for our God. He is the Lord. The Lord said in Zechariah 9 9, he was coming lowly, having salvation, your king, Israel. And then when Christ came to Jerusalem, he rolled upon the cold ass. That was our king, our God. Let's go to John 1 and 15. The ones that have eyes to see is going to understand. That's why the Lord, like I said, he became a sanctuary and a stumbling block to the Israelites. John 1 and 15 is real. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Let's go to let's go to Malachi. Let's go to Malachi chapter four. And we want five to six. The Lord said, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. 29 to 32. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised of Jesus, whom we slew and hanged on the tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. Peter and them said they are witnesses also of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God have given to them that obey him. So even the Holy Ghost is a witness of Christ. Because why? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one Israel. Let's go to uh, let's go to John chapter five. John chapter five, and we want thirty nine to forty. And Christ says, "Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are which testify of me." Because the Lord was coming in the flesh, Israel. All the prophets, they knew the Lord was coming, man. The prophets already knew. They prophesied of the Lord coming. All right? And they are which testify of me, Christ said, right? Verse 40, and ye will not come to me that ye might have a life. Because our God, the, the God of Israel, can only give us life, Israel. God put the eternal life in Jesus. His word, Israel, which is him. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5 verse 9. Okay. This is why a lot of people can't understand who Christ is. They don't want to know. You see what I'm saying? And the Father have blinded a lot of Israel's eyes to this truth, Israel. Okay. So we're going to get some understanding. 1 John Chapter 5, verse 9. That's why I, I made I make these lessons, you know what I'm saying, to hopefully edify Israel. You know, as long as the Lord allowed me to. First John chapter 5 and verse 9. And it reads. Wait, wrong one. Okay. First John chapter 5, verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, remember Peter, John, and all of them said they was witnesses of Christ, right? So the Bible says if we receive the witnesses of men, right? The witness of God is greater. And we got a witness from the Heavenly Father. He said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. He testified of his son, Israel. His word. 
the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God, which he have testified of his son, right? Which he have testified of his son, Israel. He have testified of his son. Okay. So the witness of God is greater than the witness of men, right? Let's read verse 10. He that believeth on the son of God have the witness of in himself. He that believeth not, God have made him a liar. So if you don't believe, God have made you a, a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. And this is the record that God gave his son. Um, that God have given to us eternal life and his life is in his son. He that have the life, he that have the, he that have the son have life and he that have not the son of God have not life. Right. The non-Messianics is where they have no life abiding in them because they don't believe the son of God. They don't believe the record that God gave his son in word. Right. Verse 13. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you may have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And the only way the name is Jesus Christ. The other names, Yahweh Shine, all of those is no eternal life in Israel. You got to wake up. Stop following these false camps, man. Jesus Christ is the only name he's going to get glorified in when he touched back down on the Mount of Olives. No other names. Don't let them deceive you talking about Jesus is a white man's name and all that. That's not true, Israel. Okay, which, like I said, if you go to my lesson, Israel... Don't let um don't let finding out our, our God and His Son stop you from salvation. Go watch that. All right, that's why Christ said, "Cause eternal life is in Christ, so you need Christ to obtain the eternal life." That's real. All right, that's why it says here in John chapter seven and verse thirty-eight. All right, that's why Christ said this. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, as it has said, as it is written, Israel, like I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God, right? As it is written, what, what the word says here, not adding words like these camps add words in different names. As it is written, go by as it is written, Israel. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, that living water, that eternal life. Because the life is in Christ when you believe on God's word, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the word that was made flesh. When you believe on him, you have that eternal life and you have that witness in yourself. Right? You have that witness. Let's go back to 1 John chapter 5 verse 10. And that's why he said, he that believeth on the son of God have the witness in himself. So when you believe on Jesus and his name and his word. You have the witness in yourself, Israel. Right? You already have the witness in you once you believe. That's why the Bible said, No man by the Spirit of the Lord can call Jesus accursed. You see, they don't have the they don't believe in the name Jesus. That's why they don't have eternal life. They're going to be calling upon these other names in Jacob's trouble, and the Lord ain't going to deliver them because they're calling on names that have no salvation in it. The Bible says there's no other name given them under heaven among men. Don't these men make up these names? Men make up these Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahusha, and all of this. He said, "No other name given under heaven which we uh, given among men which we must be saved by Israel. Every knee is going to bow at Jesus Christ's name when He comes back." All right, but let's get back. So God, so even God is a witness of His Son and Word, Jesus Christ. Let's go to John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You see that? Now, if you look in the Jehovah Witness Bible, it there said in the beginning was the word and the word was uh, with God and the word was a God. You see, they try to make two gods, but the KJV tells us that the word is God, Israel, not a God. There's only one Lord and one God, man. That's it. All right. One Lord, one God. That's it. That's, that's it. And he's the God of the Israelites, Jesus Christ. All right. Let's go to Proverbs 30 and 4. You got to understand this is very important, Israel. 
Because if you don't believe who the son say he is, you have no eternal life in you, Israel. You got to understand that. That's why he had to tell the Jews, if you don't believe who I, he was, then he said, at least believe me for my for the work's sake. Right? Uh, Proverbs 30 and verse 4. Who have ascended up in the heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wings in his fist? Who have bounded the waters in the garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou can tell. his son's name and what is his name what is his son's name if thou can tell right let's go back to revelations chapter 19 and 13 and it reads and he was clothed with a vest of dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god you see and his name is called the word of god israel jesus let's go to hebrews 2 and 7 Hebrews chapter 2 verse 7 Thou hast made thou madest him a little lower than the angels Thou crownest him with glory and honor And didst set him over the works of thy hands So Thou crownest him with It says thou made him a little lower than the angels Right Let's go to Hebrews 2 and 9. But we see this Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Right? Let's go over to... So Christ was made lower than the angels. He took on the form of a servant. He was made in the likeness of men. This is God, Israel. Right? And he received up on the glory when he was crowned. You see what I'm saying? For his lowliness. Like Zechariah 9 and I said, Behold, your king cometh. Um, have a salvation lowly. You see, because Christ didn't come exalted. The Most High didn't come exalted in the flesh. He came lowly to fulfill the things that was written about him in the Psalms and the prophets. And then the second coming, he's coming back with power and great glory, Israel, our God. All right? Hebrews 2 and 9, and it reads, right, so so we read that, crowned with glory, honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Let's go to Hebrews 2 and 16, and it reads, for he took on him the nature of angels, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham, right? He didn't come in the glory, he came as a, as a, in the flesh, the most High came in the flesh, all right? He came lowly, he came, took on the form of a servant. Because um, the Most High always called Jacob and Israel his servants. So Christ was made in the seed of David. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was made an Israelite from Abraham's seed. The Father came to be the king over his people. To dwell with them in the, in the physical. Okay. He was made in the... Uh, he took, but he took on him the seed of Abraham, right? Let's go to, back to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 Verse 6 to 11 Who being in the form of God Thought it not robbery to be equal with God But made himself of no reputation Took on the form of, of a servant Right he was made a little lower than the angels He uh took on the seed of Abraham but he, he made himself a no reputation because God was coming lowly. No reputation took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Right? He took on the seed of Abraham and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Right. Wherefore, God have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Everything is going to tremble and bow at the at when Christ touched back down on the Mount of Olives in Zechariah 14. He, oh, the whole earth going to know he's Jesus Christ. Every at every that that name every knee is going to bow. Not Yahweh Shai knows other names Israel. The world don't know him as that. So therefore, as it is written, as the scriptures have said, Israel, wherefore God have also highly highly exalted him. Give him a name which is above every name. Jesus Christ's name is above all these names these camps give you, Israel. You have to understand that. Don't be deceived. Don't let them make you think that Jesus is a white man's name. It's not true. It's not Zeus or none of that. It's, it's not true. Don't believe that, Israel. They want you so you won't follow the truth. Because they call Jesus' name a curse because they don't have the spirit of the Lord. Like he said, nobody by the spirit of the Lord, no one by the spirit of the Lord can call Jesus a curse. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Because Christ was the second Adam. The first Adam was made a living soul. The second Adam was made a quickening spirit, the most high. And um, um, just like um, Christ was made a little lower than the angels. But when he came lowly, when the most high came lowly and all of that, and then he was obedient to death, you know, he got that authority, man, to be at, that everything be subject to him. All things is given. That's why Christ said, all things is given to me in heaven and in earth. Because he got it exalted for coming lowly, for being lowly and humble like that. And um, he came in the form of the servant, likeness of men. God, God the Father, he exalted his word, man. And uh, gave him the authority and power. That's why even the angels, he even allowed the angels to worship him. Because the angels, know, um, because the word is God, man. It was the point for God to be all in all, Israel. All right. Uh, wherefore God also have highly exalted him. That's why when you read God is was the God God is was only the God of the living and not the dead in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, when God put on the flesh and He conquered and destroyed death and the power of when He took back the power and authority of um, from Satan, right? Then what He became um, the God of the living. He became the Lord of the living and the dead. You see what I'm saying? It was the most high to become all in all because he was only the God of the living. But since that he died, that the most high put on that flesh and he died because he was perfect and only wanted to keep the law because he created the law. The Lord, when he put on that flesh, he died as a man. And then the Lord raised, um, he got raised up by the spirit. You see what I'm saying? And now he got the authority. That's why the Bible says, whether we live or whether we die, we are still the Lord's. You see what I'm saying? Because before it, before the word was made flesh and we died without two or three witnesses under the law of Moses, without mercy, that was it. And guess who had the authority at that time over death? Satan. So we was always subject to death. You see what I'm saying? Because the wages of sin is death. So since Christ died and gave us life. So remember, the first Adam was made a, a living soul and he brought forth death. And the last Adam was, who brought forth life unto justification, he was made a quickness spirit. You see what I'm saying? So Christ is the second Adam. All right. So that was the point. So that the Lord can be all in all as well. All right. Earth and things under the earth. Verse 11. And that at every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of to the glory of God, the father. Every knee is going to bow and confess Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. All the nations, the Hebrews. We, is, we're all going to say Jesus is Lord, not Yahweh Shai and those other names, Israel. So don't be deceived. All right, let's go to Romans 14 and 11. You got to believe, Israel, as the scripture has said, not listening to doctrines of men, you know what I'm saying, precepts of men and precepts of men and doctrines of devils seducing spirits. You want to listen to as it is written, Israel. Um, Romans 14 and verse 11 and it reads for it is written as I live saith the Lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God right that every knee is going to confess and bow that Jesus Christ is Lord right Isaiah let's go to Isaiah 45 and 23 where he said that right? Isaiah 45 and 23, I have sworn by myself the word 
is going out of my mouth in righteousness. That's why we are not saved by the deeds of the Lord. We are saved by God's righteousness, right? And, and my mouth in righteousness and shall not return because his word don't return is void. His word is Christ. That unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. You see what I'm saying? And it's going to be the name Jesus as well. Let's go to 1 Peter 2, chapter, chapter 2. Don't be deceived as well. You, when, you, when you out there in the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to be calling on your Yahweh Shai and those names. The, the Lord ain't going to deliver you, man. Because those names is not... What he gave us to be saved by Israel. They're going to be calling on that name and the Lord ain't going to hear them. They're going to be calling on Yahweh Shai and Yahushua and Yahweh Ben Yahweh and all these names. And the Lord ain't going to hear them, Israel. Because salvation is only in Jesus Christ's name for Israel. Alright. Um, what did I say? First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 and we want 6 to 8 and it reads now alright let's go to uh All right, First Peter chapter two verse six to eight, and it reads, "Wherefore, now watch this. I'm gonna show you some scriptures that the Lord allowed Israel to stumble to this Israel, the mystery of the Godhead. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture: Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Right? He that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you. Therefore, which believe, he is precious." But unto them, that's why Christ is like a precious lamb without spot or blemish. But unto them which be disobedient, right? Because a lot of us Israelites are hard-headed, stiff-necked, right? And we have rejected the chief going of stone. We have heart in our hearts. The stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. When he was made lowly and, and stuff and talked about and, and went through all of that persecution, Christ was made the, the head of the corner. And that's why God exultly Highly exalted his word, Jesus, man. When everybody else rejected him. Verse 8. In a stone of stumbling, right? The same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and the rock of offense. Right? A lot of people got offended. A lot of the Jews got offended in Christ. They said, I, the Father, is one and I come from the Father and all of this. And they like, you know, God is one and this. They didn't understand because the Most High made a lot of Israel to stumble Israel. He already knew. And the stone of stumbling, the rock of offense, even to them. That's why Christ said, blesses he that is not offended in me. Even to them which stumble at the word. Because a lot of our people stumble at the word. Being why? Being disobedient because we don't want to listen. Most I say I desire um, not sacrifice but obedience. Being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So they were appointed to do this. Like he created the vessels for destruction and vessels for righteousness, Israel. The Lord created the day, uh, the wicked for the day of evil. Evil shall slay the wicked. You see what I'm saying? A lot of us is playing what the, we were appointed to play. A lot of us stumbled to where we was appointed to stumble. It's not meant for every Israelite to get it, Israel. Whereunto also they were appointed. Let's go to Isaiah 28 and 16. Isaiah, you got to understand this thing is deep, Israel. This thing is deep. Isaiah 28 and verse 16. It reads, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tri-stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make, shall not make haste. Right? So the Lord already knew in the Old Testament, he set it up this way. He knew a lot of people would stumble at his coming, the first coming, when he was coming um, to fulfill everything written by him in the Psalms of the Prophet. He already knew. That's why he became a stumbling block. Okay, let's go over to uh, 
Let's go to Romans 9 and 33. Romans 9, you got to understand, Israel. That's why it was a seed to whom the promise was made, man. It was a seed that was going to get it. That the Lord already ordained. It's a grape that he, his, his grape is kept. You see what I'm saying? His grape, his plant that he's been planting with his own hands. He already knew a lot of Israel be hard-headed. You know what I'm saying? But the ones that understand is going to get it, Israel. That he allowed to understand. Uh, said Romans 9 and 33, man. Romans 9 and 33. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Christ, that's why he said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Because the Lord laid him as a, uh, laid him as a stumbling stone to Israel. He became a sanctuary and a stumbling block to the children of Israel. Because he already knew how Christ was going to come. His word, how the Most High was going to come. And he knew they was going to reject him. Just like they rejected him being king. When he told Samuel, I'm hearkening unto the people. They have not rejected thee, but me as being king over them. The same thing when, the, when our king came again in the flesh. Because remember, we wanted to be like the heathen. And we wanted to set a king over, a physical king over us. And the Lord gave us rules for a physical king. Which King Solomon, King David, couldn't kept and Roboam and Jeroboam and all the kings broke the law. So who was perfect to keep the law that could keep the law is the most high who created the law. So he had to come as his word and put on the flesh. So therefore, he, we rejected our king when he came lowly in Jerusalem in the New Testament. We rejected him again. He became a stumbling block to us, Israel. You got to understand this is deep. Let's go to Isaiah. So let's read Romans 9 and 33 again. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoso believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Right? A lot of our people was ashamed at that time because they didn't want to believe this was our God, our king who was coming to deliver us from the, you know, they, we thought we was going to be delivered from the Roman um, jurisdiction at that time. You know what I'm saying? Our king came lowly. He didn't come to fight nobody. He came to fulfill everything that was written about him in the Psalms and the Prophets. You see what I'm saying? But he came to die for the sins of Israel. That was the point, so that he could reconcile them back by shedding his blood on a cross, on a tree. You see what I'm saying? To bring us salvation, to give us salvation. Now our God has come back with power and great glory when he comes back. The second coming, Israel. So, he already knew a lot of them was going to reject him. All right? Because a lot of them was appointed, was stumbled to where they was appointed. Just like us today, a lot of Israelites... Don't want to hear the truth. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to acknowledge who Christ truly is because they was appointed to stumble. Alright? This uh who's so being should not make be ashamed, right? <clears throat> Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13 to 17. And it reads, Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. But said, let him be your fear and let him be your dread, Israel. And he shall be, watch this, and he shall be for a, for, and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of Israel. You see that, Israel? The Lord became a sanctuary and a stumbling block to us. Let's read that again. Verse 14, and he shall be for a sanctuary, right? For a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, Israel. To who? To just Judah? To both the house of Israel. For again, for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, right? To the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Verse 15, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Verse 16, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his faith from the house of Jacob and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwell in Mount Zion. So the Lord became a sanctuary and a stumbling block to both the house of Israel. 
And he said, a many, among us, a many among us will stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken because we reject the chief cornerstone, Christ, who is the heavenly father that was made flesh, Israel. Do you see it, Israel? All right. So we're going to, we're going to, I'm not going to show you no more about the stumbling, but we probably might get to some more at the end, you know what I'm saying, of this lesson. I'm going to show you more while we stumble. But let's get back, right? Let's go to Luke. Let me see something. Let's go to Luke chapter 20. Got to understand this, Israel. The Lord already knew what he was doing. He knew a lot of us wasn't listening. It's like when he brought us out of Egypt, he knew a lot of us wasn't going to listen. Right? As you said, I knew they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Luke chapter 20, verse 17 to 18. And it reads, and, be, and he beheld them, and he beheld them, and said, what is this then that is written? Christ said, what is this that then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner, right? Whoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. And he said in Isaiah, we just read he, that he would become a sanctuary in a stumbling block. And many of us shall stumble and fall and be in a snare and a trap. Christ already knew because the, he already he was the one that said it to us in Isaiah. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And they did a lot of our people and do a lot of our people today because we don't understand who Christ truly is. All right, let's, let's go to Matthew 21 and 42. Let's get a little bit. Let me see. 21. All praises, man. In Jesus' name. Matthew 21 and 42. Jesus said unto them, Did you ever read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head the head of the corner, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Oh, man, this is the Lord's doing, man. He allowed, it was meant for a lot of us to stumble to who Christ was, Israel. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Let's go to Psalms 118 and 22. Psalms 18 and 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner, Israel. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom, in whom all the building fitly framed together, grow up into an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also built together for an, habita an habitation of God through the Spirit. This is talking to the Israelites that's going to get it, Israel, not all Israel is going to understand. The ones that believe. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we want 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 through 11. And it reads For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building, Israel. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation in another building. Build if they're wrong, but let every man take heed how he build if they're upon. For the other foundation can no man lay than, than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, and hay, and stubble. Right? 
So Jesus Christ is the building. He's the chief head, the chief head of the uh, the cornerstone. He's the chief head, the Most High Israel. A lot of us stumbled at this. Um, all right, let's read verse eleven again. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. All right, let's go to Acts chapter four. Acts chapter four. And we want 11 to 12. This is the stone which was set at nothing, right? The ones a lot of our people rejected said this ain't our king and this and that because he came lowly and took on the form because God came lowly and brought salvation. He didn't come waging war the first time with the, with the sword, with a sword and coming to destroy Caesar and them, right? So we rejected him. He said, you know, we who was nothing, we rejected our God, right? He took on the form of a servant, right? Who took, uh, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Put uh, was made in the fashion like the fashion of a man, who was from this took on the not the the nature of angels, but of the seed of Abraham, who was made a little lower than the angels. He was a cert he was made as a servant. You see, we didn't want to accept our God when He came like that. He didn't come. The first time with power and great glory. So we rejected the chief cornerstone. This is the stone which was set at nothing of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. And it, just because our people rejected him and our people still reject Christ for who he truly is, he's exalted, man. He's still exalted. A lot of Israelites set him at nothing and just call him just a man and just a prophet and stuff like that. But that was, the, that was our God, Israel. That was the Heavenly Father, man. Right. <clears throat> this is the stone which was set at nothing of you builders, which you become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, Israel. There is no There is no other name, Israel. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, Israel. Only in Jesus Christ. That's it. Don't believe those other names. Let's go over to Hebrews. Let's go back to Hebrews. Let's go back to Hebrews. Two and seven. Hebrews two and seven. I hope, Israel, that you open your eyes up and see the truth that the Heavenly Father opened up your eyes to this. Hebrews two and seven. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedst him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the work of thy hands. Right? And set him over the work of thy hands. Set him over the work of thy hands. All right, let's go to Hebrews 2 and 9. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, right? That he should taste death for every man. He was made a little lower than the angels. All right, and I said Jesus was made a little lower than the angels, right? Who was who is this was referring to in the Old Testament? Who was made a little lower than the angels? Adam, Israel. Let's go. Let's go to Psalm chapter eight, verse five. For thou has made him a little lower than the angels, and has crowned him with glory and honor. This is talking about Adam in Psalm chapter eight, and uh, verse five, because Adam, when God created Adam. Adam was made a little lower than the angels. Man. 
That's why Christ had to become the second Adam. He was made a little lower than the angels. God had to come and be made lower than the, than the angels. He couldn't come with power and great glory because he had to become the second Adam, Israel. He had to become a man. Right? So that's why Christ is the second Adam, Israel. They both was made a little lower than the angels. Adam was made a little lower than the angels. Christ was made a little lower than the angels. So he could become the second Adam, Israel. God put on the flesh. All right. Uh, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 11. 14 and it reads for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified sanctified are all one right we're the body of Christ Israel the southern and the northern kingdom of Israel for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren why because Christ was made in from he was made an Israelite all right the most High was made an Israelite to call them brethren saying I'll declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church without which will I sing praise unto thee and again I will put my trust in him, and again, behold, I and the children which God have given me. You see that? To the children um, have God have given me. Right? Right? Where, where did that come from? And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God have given me because Christ was that obedient Israelite, man. You see what I'm saying? He was the Israelite that listened to the most high law. You see what I'm saying? Oh, man, this thing is deep because Israel would always listen, uh, wouldn't listen. They was disobedient, right? The most high was put on the flesh. He became an Israelite and kept the law perfectly. Therefore, he was perfect because he was a, he was made an Israelite. So therefore, he hearkened to the Lord. You see what I'm saying? And he was he did he uh did all the Lord required. You see what I'm saying? And he was an Israelite. Remember, Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. So therefore he kept the Lord perfect for Israel. You see what I'm saying? He was he kept the Lord perfect so that he can um and he was obedient to death. And, and what he do, he made both the sort of northern, northern kingdom one kingdom again when he died on the tree, on the cross. Right? He made twin one new man through the body of Christ. That's why we are his church, Israel. We are the members of his church. All right, like I said, this thing is deep, but let's go back. We was reading that Hebrews 2 and 13. He said, and again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God have given me. Right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. And it reads, behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given me for signs and for wonders in Israel, for the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Right? Um, verse 14 Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood He also himself likewise took part of the same That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death That is the devil For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood He also the most high the word he also himself likewise took part of the same, right? God was made um, man Israel. Let's jump over to verse 16 to 17. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, right? But he took on him the seed of Abraham. He became a man. Verse 17. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. And things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, Israel. Isaiah 53 was talking about the Mashiach that was coming of the seed of David from the tribe of Judah. Christ, the righteous branch, that uh, the branch that came out of uh, Jesse, that branch he said he was going to raise up. Um, his, uh, his, his, uh, the Lord's servant, all right, who was going to bring righteousness to Israel, who was going to die for their sins. Right, Isaiah 53, Christ, the word, Israel, the most high. Let's go back. So he took them not on the natures of angels, right? Let's go back to Philippians chapter 2. So you can understand 
the Most High became a man, Israel. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Right? Let's go to Zechariah 9 and 9. Why? He, Christ didn't come with power and great glory the first time. The, the Most High didn't come with that the first time. He took of him no reputation and took upon the form of the servants, made in the likeness of men. We didn't understand the Most High was standing there with us because we didn't see him come with the glory that he has in the heavens. So we didn't want to see then. Zechariah 9 and 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass, Israel. The Lord told us he was coming. Let's go back to Philippians 2 and we read verse 6. Who being in the form of God, though did not rob you to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation, took on the form of a servant. It was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Right? Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, man. Let's go to Romans chapter 5 and 14, Israel. Romans chapter 5 and 14. Nevertheless, de uh, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. The figure of him that was to come, Christ. Adam was the figure of him that was to come, Israel. Christ was ordained from the foundation of the world, but he was manifested in the last days for us. All right. He was already ordained to do all this from the beginning, but he was manifesting these last times for us. The Most High was going to send His Word since the beginning to save, to save us, Israel. Who is uh, the Word? Who is the Most High? All right, let's go to First Corinthians fifteen and forty-five. First Corinthians fifteen and verse forty-five. And so it is written: the first man Adam was made a living soul; the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. You see that because Christ came through the womb of a woman, and Christ was conceived of the Holy of um, the Holy Ghost. All right. The first man Adam was made a living soul. Second Adam was made a quickening spirit. Right. Let's read that again. And so it is written. The first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. All right. The first man, <clears throat> the first man Adam was made a living soul. Let's go to Genesis chapter two and seven. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Right? Just like we read at, in the first Corinthians 45. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. Right? Let's go to Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Right? Hebrews 1 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Right? Let's go. Right? Let's, let's go to. Uh, Let's go to Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 to 35. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Right? Joseph is not the daddy. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Right?
Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on his wise, when as his mother Mary was the spouse of Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Right? Let's jump down to verse 20. And while the uh, verse 20, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, Israel. Is of the Holy Ghost, right? Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit, Israel, Christ. All right, Christ. Let's go to John chapter 14 and 6. John chapter 14 and verse 6. And it reads, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm John chapter 14 and verse 6, right. Let's go to John 6 and 63. John chapter 6 and 63. Christ said, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Christ was, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, right? He was conceived of the Holy Ghost, Let's go to Psalms. Let's go back to Psalm chapter 8. Let me see. Let's go back to Psalms chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8, and we want 6 through 7. Thou has made him to have dominion over the work of thy hands. That has put all things under his feet. Uh, verse 7. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, but so it passes through the paths of the sea. It's talking about Adam. Right? Remember, God gave dominion, all that to, to Adam, right? Christ was made the second Adam. Let's go over to 2nd Edges chapter 6. 2nd Edges chapter 6. Second Edges chapter 6, verse 53 to 54. It reads, Upon the sixth day thou gavest commandment unto the earth, that before thee it should bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. And after these, Adam also, who made his Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. Right? He made him Lord of all thy creatures. He made Adam Lord of all thy creatures. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 24 to 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse uh, four, 24 to 27. And the Lord God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his, after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth. And after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after the likeness and let them have dominion. Let's, let us make men after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Right. So he was um, Adam was given dominion over all of that, over all the earth and over every creeping thing. Right. Remember that, Israel. And uh, every thing upon the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. And the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Right? Let's go back to 2nd Edges. Chapter 8 and 44. 2nd Edges chapter 8 and 44. Even so perishes man also, which is formed with thy hands, and he is called thine own image, because thou art like unto him.
For whose sake thou hast made all things, and liken him unto the husband's men's seed. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and 23, Israel. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and 23. For God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Do you see it, Israel? Adam was made, uh, the first Adam was made a living soul. The second Adam was made a quickness spirit. Same thing, Adam was given, Christ was given, okay? And much more. We're going to show you this. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 to 30. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you herb, every herb bearing seed, which upon the face of, the, of all the earth, and every tree, and the which is the fruit of the tree, yielding seed to you, it should be for me. Verse 30, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, Wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Right? And it was so. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 2 and 8. So we see Adam was given all things, everything, dominion over the earth, the fish, the fowl, the cattle, the, the herbs, everything Adam was given. Israel. Let me see how much I got. Go back to Hebrews. All right, we understand that this is about Adam now, right? Hebrews chapter 2. And we want verse 8. And it reads, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all, all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. This is talking about Jesus. All things was put under Christ. You see what I'm saying? Just like Adam, because he's the second Adam, Israel. That brought forth life instead of death. Okay? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 2 to 4. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Having these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Remember, God made Adam to be of his own eternity, right? Just like the same thing. Christ is the image of the heavenly father because he is the heavenly father. He is the word of God, Israel, who being the brightness of his glory. And the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Adam never went into the heaven itself or none of that. Was, and was given to sit on the right hand of the father. Right? On the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels. As he have by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. All right? All right? Have obtained a much. Christ was made better than the angels. You see what I'm saying? But he that's why he didn't come in the form of the angel. He came as a humble servant. All right? Uh, let's go to Matthew 28 and 18. Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus said, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That's why he had to die first so that he could bring forth life. You see, because the same thing, the Most High told Adam, um, If you eat from the tree of good and the knowledge of evil, you shall surely die, right? So Christ died. Um, Adam, we know Adam and Eve died. 
Christ died, he was the second Adam and brought forth life. So therefore, all things was subjected unto him, just like how Adam got the dominion over the earth and everything like that. Right. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The second Adam, the word of God. Let's go to let's go to first Corinthians 15. And 24. Right, First Corinthians 15 and 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put all put down all rule and all authority and power Israel. Right? Because his enemies gotta uh, he gotta sit down on the right hand of the Father till his enemies be made his footstool, right? The last enemy is what? Is death. Let's jump to verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Which is after the thousand years reign is up after the battle of Gog and Magog when the Father sent down fire from heaven. That's when death is going to be swallowed up when the new Jerusalem is coming. Okay, so when he had delivered up the kingdom up to God, right? It was about delivering up to back to him to righteousness, Israel. Let's go to uh, Obadiah one and twenty one. Obadiah 1 in verse 21. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. And then he shall deliver up the kingdom, right? He shall deliver up the kingdom back, um, back unto the Father, right? And we just read, and Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's, right? And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Let's go to Daniel 2 and 44. Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. The kingdom of Christ, of God, man. Both kingdoms is Christ. Who is the most high, right? Which is um, going to be under Jacob's, is going to be our kingdom, Jacob, right? Under Christ, under the heavenly father, right? Our world, our kingdom is forever Israel. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. And we're going to start at verse 13 to 14. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, right? Christ, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him there before him. And there was given him, Christ, a dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is the everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, right? Let's jump over to verse 18. But the saints of the Most High, the Israelites, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess it, own it, the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever, Israel. Let's jump down to verse 25 to 27. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, the Israelites, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until they end. Verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, the Israelites, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. You see that? That's why he said, what nation that will not come up to serve thee shall be utterly destroyed, shall be destroyed. Yeah, they shall be utterly wasted. And when Christ be king over all the earth, when he come back for the first resurrection kingdom, like he said, and all the nations that is left got to come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And if they don't, there will be no rain. Right? That is the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the heathen. All right. So this is all talking to Christ, the most high Israel. Let's go over to, uh, let's go to Ephesians. Like I 
I said, the Most High became a stumbling block to us in the sanctuary, Israel. Ephesians chapter 1, and we want verse 10 to 23. And it reads, let me see, 10 to 23. And it reads that in the disposition of fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Right. That was the point for God to become all in all, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. Right. He that's why he said Christ delivered the kingdom back to the father because he had to come die to take the power of death. Who had the power of death was Satan, Israel, even him and whom also we obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him. Who work of all things after the counsel of his own will. Because the, the, the word, the word, the son uh, and the father have the same will, man. <laughs> the counsel of his own will. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. And whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. Right? The ones that got to taste the good fruit of the word. The gospel of your salvation. Because this is our salvation. If the word is tampered with, like these camps say. Or people say, oh, the KJV is temple. How is our salvation going to be then, Israel? Our salvation is these words in the Bible. Your salvation, whom also, after that ye believe, because when we heard this, we believed, right? You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right? Which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That's why we are the temple of Christ, Israel. We're the temple of the Most High God. Verse 15. But for I also have, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the holy. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, right? Like the Bible says, I think it's in Wisdom of Solomon, he has care for his elect, right? Let me see. Yeah, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter three, and uh, Verse 7, we're going to start at 7. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations that have dominion over the people. And their Lord shall reign forever. That's Christ. That's the Most High God. That's what he said. He that overcome will I give him a, um, a, a, a rod of iron to rule over the nations, right? Verse 9, they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, right? When you trust in him, you, you he will give you the wisdom and knowledge of his word liberally, freely, right? The fear of the Lord. You got to fear the Lord. All right, and like he said, he knows who trusts in him. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. What is the truth? Christ always told us the word is the truth. All right, Psalms 119, 16, the word is true from thy word is true from the beginning. And such as the faithful and love shall abide with him, for grace and mercy is to his saints, and he have care of and he have care for his elect. His elect is already ordained from the foundation of the world to make it the hundred and forty four thousand, whoever they are. You see what I'm saying? Glory of his inheritance and the saints, right? And the saints, and the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, who believe, right? According to the working of his mighty power. That's why he says here in 2nd Edris, you need faith, Israel. 2nd uh, Edris chapter 9. Verse 6, even so the times also of the highest have planned beginnings and wonders and wonderful works and the endings and effects and signs. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works by what? Faith, they believe, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the set of perils and shall see my salvation in my land. And within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Right? The elect, the ones that, that's going to understand this, which he said, the elect is going to be, they're going to be uh, known 
after they're tried in the fire because the elect is not going to know they're elect until they're tried in the fire. They're going to be tried in the fire too. That's why these camps are oh, we the elect, we the elect, GMS this and we the elect. Nobody knows who the elect is, Israel. The Lord knows who the elect. Second Ezra chapter 16, and that's why he said here. Um, verse 69, and they that consent unto them it shall be had in derision and in reproach, tried on the foot. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like mad men, spirit none, but still, uh, still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. But they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Watch this, verse 73. Then shall be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Then it's going to be known after they go through the fire, Israel, they're going to, then it's going to be known who is his chosen, his elect. All right? Um, but these camps are so focused on being the elect. The elect has already been ordained, whoever they are. You need to just focus as being an Israelite trying to make it to the kingdom. Don't worry about status and reputation. Oh, I got to be the elect. I'm the elect. The Lord already know who is his elect is. You as Israel, we as Israelites just need to focus on being as Israelites. Don't worry about trying to get a name and a place, Israel. You just as an Israelite tribe, man, to the working of his mighty power, right? Lord already know, like I said, he already know who his elect is. So don't just work out your own salvation with fear and trouble in Israel. <clears throat> his mighty power, right? Which he wrought in Christ, we, we're back in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come. Right? Which is the world to come. Which is the, the, that which is to come, and I put all things under his feet. Didn't he do that to Adam? Right? Adam was made a little lower than the angels and gave him to be the head over all things to, to the church. Which, uh, verse 23, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all Israel. Let's go to Hebrews 6 and 5. Do you see it now, Israel? Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 5 and it reads and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come right if he allowed you to taste the good word of God right like he said here in Ephesians 1 in verse 13 in whom you also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom after, also after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Right? So Hebrews 6 and, and 5. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Right? If he allowed you to get that the truth about it, of who is Christ and who, who he truly is. Right? And, the word, and his word entirely. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things unto him that God may be all in all because Christ became, because we know God is only the, was only the God of the living, right? And not of the dead Israel, but um, God made Christ both, um, made Jesus both Christ and Lord. And then when you go to Romans chapter 14 and verse 9, it says for this, for this, for to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be the Lord, both of the dead and living. Now, God is uh, the God of the dead and the living. Now, do you see it, Israel? It was so that the most high can be all. It was so the most high. Can be all in all Israel. First Corinthians 15 and 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him. Then shall the son also himself be subject unto him. That put all things unto him. That God may be all in all. It was for the heavenly father. So he could put on the flesh to come swallow up death. And to die for the sins of his people. Because he was perfect Israel. You see what I'm saying? He His word is eternity. He is eternity. 
or only he can do it because the law was is spiritual, but we Israelites were carnal. So the father had to come pay that payment for us. We owe the heavenly father a payment for breaking his everlasting for breaking his covenant with Moses. And he loved Israel so much he came and paid it for us. He put on the flesh for us, Israel. Do you see it? All praise and glory, man, to the Heavenly Father in Jesus' name and the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Truth. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 6, Israel. Ephesians 4 and 6. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let's go to Colossians 2 and 9. Colossians 2 and 9. For in him, meaning Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. A lot of people stumble upon the mystery of the Godhead. Alright. Colossians 1, verse 15 to 20. Who is the image of the invisible God, Christ, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created. By Christ, all things are created because he is the word that created all things, who is God. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things was created by him and for him. That's why the most I said in the Old Testament, he created all things for his glory. That the word is God. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, right? Because Christ became the first fruits of them that slept. For it pleased the Father, it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made, because we know the Most High said in the Old Testament, he don't share his glory with no one or graven images. Because the word, the word is God, he is, the word is himself, the word is him. So he's getting glory from all ends, Israel. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things, things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Let's go to 1 Timothy 3 and 16. I hope you see it, Israel. I know you see it. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh Justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles, believe on the world and received up into glory. Right? It was the heavenly father Israel. John 1 and 14. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 7. I might have to end that. If the video ends, Israel, then I'll see y'all back on part four, God was willing. All right. Isaiah 45 and seven. All right. The Lord said what? I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. And it reads, See now that I am, I am, so I can see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. There is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out my hand. Right? Like Hebrews 10 says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And what Christ said, no man could pluck you out of my father's hand, right? Can deliver out my hand. Right? Uh, Okay, we should be a little bit much. Okay, let's keep going. Right? So the Lord said, Hey, look, 
I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace, I create evil, I'm the Lord through all these things, right? He said, uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 39, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. So he said, there ain't no God with him, Israel. Because the word, the, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one. They're not separate. Okay? There is no God with me. Let's go to Psalms 145 and 17. Psalms 145. Psalms 145 and 17. And the Lord is not evil or nothing like that. He is very holy and very righteous, Israel. Isaiah, uh, Psalms 40, 145 and 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. He created everything. Israel, the most high is about balance. He creates everything. He forms it like he created darkness. He wounds, he heals, he kills. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of the first and the last, man. All right? He is holy in all his ways and holy in all his works. Right, like I said before, man, I heard one of them GMS guys talking about, oh, the most high is evil. He's all that. No, he's not evil, man. Let's go to Matthew 11 and 27. Matthew 11 and 27 Christ said all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the father neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son revealeth him like Christ said you got to be given from the of the father got to give you to Christ you see what I'm saying so why is he saying that nobody knows the father but the son because they are one Israel he's the word of God who is God let's go over to Colossians 1 and 16 Colossians 1 and 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things was created by him and for him. All things were created by Christ and for Christ, for the Most High Israel. Let's to Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11 wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus Christ that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ the Lord to glory to the glory of God the Father let's go Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2 and 14. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also like God took part of the same because Christ came through the womb of a woman, Israel. He came through the um the the, the blood, man, and, and the water. Right? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 24. Nevertheless, through the envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Let's go to Romans chapter 5 and 12. Romans chapter 5 and 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. All right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 
chapter 15 and verse 22. And it reads, for as an Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You see that? Because through Adam, but which it was really through Eve, Eve was the, through the transgression. All right. Um, go look at my video about um, the woman not to teach. And I explained more about how it was the woman that transgressed. Not, not Adam, not the man. All right. So it says, for as an Adam will die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. All right. Let's go to Second Ezra's. Second Ezra chapter seven. Verse 10 to 11. And I said, it is so, Lord, then said he unto me, even so also is Israel portion. Because for their sakes I made the world, and, be, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was then was decreed that now is done, right? But it, it says Adam, right? But it's really it was really Eve. Second Ezra chapter seven, verse forty six to forty nine. I answered then and said, This is my first and last saying that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, or else when it was given to him to have restrained him from sinning. For what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after death to look for punishment? O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us in a mortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? Wages of sin is death, right? All unrighteousness is um, sin. Uh, if you don't have faith, the Bible says it's, it's sin. Okay? Um, let's go to Sirach 25 and 24, which is Ecclesiasticus 25 and 24. And it reads, of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. You see that? The beginning of sin, of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2 and 14. 1 Timothy 2 and 14, and it reads, And Adam was not deceived, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. Second Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 2 and 15. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Now it standeth she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Right? Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 2 and 14. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, right? And it reads, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, right? So he, he, he took on partaker of flesh and blood. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 6. First John 5 and 6, and it reads, This is he that came by water and blood. He took part of the same of flesh and blood. We just read. This is he talking about Christ. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that be a witness because the spirit is truth. Let's jump over to verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. You see that? Let's go to Matthew 1 and 18. Christ came from a womb, Israel. He is conceived of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 1 in verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on his wise when as his mother Mary was the spouse of Joseph to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost, right? 
the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Chapter 1, verse 31. And, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Let's jump down to verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto him, and the angel answered and said unto him, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, Israel. As Christ came through the water and blood, just like as we do, the Israelites, or a man. All right? The Most High was made a man, Israel. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 5. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. All right. So I'm coming to an end. So God loves willing Israel. I hope this was this was, uh this video was edifying and we're gonna continue to dig more deep because there's a lot more to come, Israel, about who is Christ. Alright? So God loves when I see you back on part four. So on that note, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the most high God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Israelites, and his word, wisdom, and son Jesus Christ, who was made flesh to die for the twelve tribes of Israel. Um, not just Judah, but for also the northern kingdom. And the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. So on that note, 